Hello, good morning. And uh, this is Anita, innocent, as to say. Um, I had a conversation with a colleague last night, and um, she's from Trinidad and Tobago, and she encouraged me to try and make a, a video of some of the things that is happening to be able to share to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, especially. Um, and some factual things about this coronavirus. Well, first to begin, I just want to let you know that I'm a registered nurse. And what I'm saying is basically um, a short version of the all the things that has been going on around. Um, but to make sure that you are informed of, of some things that uh, you need to do. First to begin, I... This coronavirus is a site. It's have been around for some time, but uh, apparently this is a mutated version of the virus. Because if you look at the back of your bleach bottle or your Clorox bottle, you will see that it says that bleach and Clorox can kill the coronavirus, um, and. Um, for some reason, this virus has um, started transferring from human to human. I don't want to go through all where it started. I just wanted for you to understand what the impact is to yourself. Right now, um, the world is in real problems. Uh, if you start with the U.S., the United States, the death toll is over 300, the, 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 diagnostic or the patient that has found is over 300,000 deaths are over 14,000 and plus going with a serious case in the in the in New York Spain is over 100,000 plus Italy is over 100,000 plus UK is 40,000 and we haven't even peaked um we have not peaked yet so the thing is is this virus is a very, very serious Trinidad and Tobago or people. It can enter your body in three orifices, okay? First, I want to explain via your eyes. It is your lacrimal canal, that part of your eyes that produce tears and that duct that you, when you wake up in the morning, you might see white things around your eyes and you want to clean it. There's a canal in the corner of your eyes here that is connected to the back of your nose. And that nose, if the virus gets into that canal, it can make its way down to your nose. Once it gets there, you breathe it in, it goes to your throat and then your lungs. Your eye, your nose, if you breathe it in as well, it goes through your, your respiratory system, it goes to your lungs. If you, if droplets or it goes via your mouth, it can also uh, go to your respiratory system. This is why um, the health services and the government is saying to you, do not touch your face. So if you rub your eyes with, with your dirty hands, that might have the virus. If you put, if you breathe it in and if it goes to your, into your mouth, that means the virus is getting into your system. Now, you have to be aware that viruses, when it enters your body, it can enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to 10, 20. Those are what they explain to be as viral loads. Is how many of the virus you've been exposed to at that time. So it has a bigger, so if, let's say, you multiply one virus by four, then you're going to have one by four. And if you have 10, which is the viral load, it's 10 by four, which is 40. Whereas someone might have just one viral virus contacted. So the viral load is different. Okay. I want you to understand that touching your eyes, your nose and your mouth will, can introduce the virus into your body. Another thing is if you're in a crowd, crowd increases your viral load. This is why the government is saying to you not to be in crowded places or be in crowds and trying to keep um, six feet apart from people or a good distance so they don't cough. So they're trying to tell you not to go to the crowd so you don't get exposed people. Okay. Um, 
Now, some people are saying it's six feet apart or six feet under. This virus is very, very, very detrimental to you. I want you to understand that once this virus multiplies and it gets into your respiratory system, you can develop pneumonia. And your, your lungs itself looks like fiberglass. For Trinidad people, you know what fiberglass looks like. You know, in the Caribbean and over the world, you know what virus looks like, the fiberglass look like. Your lungs become like that. And then the worst thing is that the person cannot, you cannot breathe. You feel as though you're in the, in a, in the, in the sea drowning. Your, your eyes is open and you just can't get the air. So you breathe laboriously, you breathe and you breathe and nothing is going because the pneumonia and the virus has caused a block in all the alveoli that will give your body oxygen. So you are dying slowly. Patients that are on ventilators, they give them the ventilator because they can get some oxygen in. But when it gets to the point that the patient cannot get any oxygen in, the only thing for the doctors them to do is to take the patient off the ventilator and let them die with with you know with dignity and that while they are asleep they allow them to die with dignity they inform the family let me tell you something we have 5 year old 9 year old 13 year old 19 year old people that have died from the virus so i want you to understand that it is very important to follow the instructions do not go in crowded places if you have to do your shopping if you can do it online or if you can tell the grocery what you want in trinidad i know there's no online shopping but around the world where there's online shopping they can do online shopping i want you to understand that it is your life and your family life at risk if you don't do what you're supposed to do and stay home if you don't have to, do not go to the beaches, do not go to parties, do not go to pubs, you don't know who carrying it. I want you to understand while I was working in accident and emergency, two patients came to accident and emergency because they had injury falls. And only because we had to do an x-ray, we identified the patient had corona because of the x-rays. These patients did not have any form of symptom so you could be talking to someone who doesn't have any symptoms whatsoever and has the virus they breathe into your face you know some people can talk and the droplets go out and it drops in your face you rub your face it goes to your mouth you breathe it in and that virus gets into your system once it get there it has the nice environment for it to start multiplying so i want you to understand some people do not have symptoms at all but they're carrying the virus it's just like People, when they say old oh, people have HIV or AIDS, they carry the, the, the virus, but they have no symptoms. I want to tell you something. Coronavirus, some people have no symptoms whatsoever. You only find out via x-rays. Some people might have cold. Some people have fever. Some people have coughing. Some people even have diarrhea with no fevers. Some people, um, they can't sleep at night. So they, they have insomnia, they sweat at night and they, they can't sleep, but there's no fever, there's no coughing, there's nothing like that. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so I want you to understand, if you put yourself in a crowded place where there are people, lots of people, you, you all have sunshine and you want to go on the beach, <clears throat> you want to go in the park. <clears throat> Sorry. And you want to go in the park, I want to tell you something. You're putting yourself and your family at risk. Another thing I want to, to talk to you about, those of you who have, you go there and they said to you that you should wear, you're wearing face masks, gloves, and, and you're not protecting yourself properly. Some people wear face masks like these. Okay, fine. It's if, if you on the outside, yes, it has three plies. It can protect you. Um... Yes, it can. Okay, it could protect you. Um, if you're coughing, now they're trying to say in the, the United States um, and in England here, wear your face mask when you go outside. But it doesn't make sense you wear a face mask. And if you don't wear glasses, then you wear this face mask and you leave your eyes exposed so the virus can get in. So some people, you wear the face mask and you wear something like a little goggles or a visor. 
okay so you wear something like this and this okay you wear it and you go out so you're covering your eyes and you're covering your nose as well now people i wear glasses but i don't need goggles I, I, another thing I want to talk to you about is these gloves that I see people wearing on the outside. You wear it and you go to the supermarket. You put the gloves on. I want you to understand this gloves is a false sense of security. Because when you put the gloves on, you think that you're safe. But everywhere you go, you take something up. So let's say I take the pen in the shop, put it down. I take this in the shop, I put it down. And then I take something else and I put it down. Now, the shop, you don't know if the virus is on any packages in the shop. You don't know. But you're wearing the gloves to protect yourself. Then you go to the cashier. The cashier has a gloves where she's cashing people every day. She touches your item. She put it in the bag. They bag the items and then you take it to your car. Okay. Let me tell you something. And you have your gloves on. You take the, the things with your gloves. You put it in your car and then you throw the gloves off and you wash your hand. Watch me. That's just wasting your time because you take the gloves off, but all the bags and the grocery that you have has any particles that this glove would have had on it. So what you need to do, and I tried it and tested it and it worked. I felt it worked very well. Is that, yes, you have your face mask and your goggles on. And you go to your shop. Continue shopping with your hands just like that. Make sure you have something like a either a hand sanitizer if you can find it you have some sort of wipes if you can find it or you just have plain soap and water let's say that you have the soap and water in the trunk of your car waiting okay for people who can't afford all these fancy things um and it's not in the shop so you go you yes you show your face you wear your face mask you wear your goggles and you go your shopping okay so you 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 do your shopping with your hand. Just make sure you don't put it in your face. You pick your shopping, you put it in your basket. First to begin, what I did is when I was getting my basket, I spray the basket hand, the, the handle, you know, or wipe it so that I would reduce any contact. It's dry anyway. So you go, you do your shopping. You put your things, you go through your cashier. When you get to your vehicle, is either you have wipes or you have your 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 own personal bags in your car that you don't take in the in the shops you just have bags that you have from home that you clean and you wipe and you sterilize in the trunk of your car which is fine so you come out with your basket okay then what you do or what i did is i wash my hands i sprayed my hands with my palm sprayed very well rub it after you put the pump down rub it and then what i did is that all the plastic the food that is in the bag that has plastics or whatever i just wipe them and clean them outside and then put them in my bag in the trunk so you're not touching with your gloves on you're doing that because your hands is you clean your hands you put your gloves on and then you start touching your food and you clean them and you put them in any bag you wipe it you put it in your bag so you're not transferring anything from your trolley into your trunk okay and it might seem a long and drawn out process but if that's what you have to do that's what you have to do when you get everything in your car let's say you have fruits and vegetables okay fruits and vegetables you can't spray them okay but have a separate bag that you can tie okay so you, what you do is that you put your stuff in there, you put your fruits and vegetables in the separate bag. After you get everything off, you take your gloves off, get some spray, and then you tie your bag, your fruits and vegetables in that seal bag. Seal it. Bring it home. If you have inside, at least the bags are clean because you brought it from your house. It stayed in the car. You didn't take it to shopping. And then after you bring your fruits and vegetables and you wash them in your sink and you put them in a dryer and dry them. Okay. I want to let you know it might be long. It might be a process, but you can be protecting yourself. So what I want to remind you about is that if you're wearing face masks, you have to wear goggles because the virus can get through your lacrimal canal in the back of your, your nose. 
and then if you're wearing your gloves, don't wear your gloves and then pack everything inside your car and then you take the gloves off and you ball, oh, I've done something really great. No, you're just increasing your risk. Okay, so you go home, you unpack your stuff, your bags, your, your grocery packets are already dried and wiped with your bag so you can bring it home safely with no problem. And I want you to understand that it is important everything you do, wash your hands wash your hands. You would have wipes. You can wipe your phone down. You can wipe your, your, your chargers down. When you go to your car, you can wipe your, your steering down and all of these things. You can do all of these things to protect yourself. But the key thing here is to ensure that you don't go to crowded places and you're not mingling with people. Another thing, people, is that is your body defense mechanisms have to fight this virus. If you're not eating well, if you're not resting well, and you're not taking supplements and vitamins, your body cannot fight. You're sending your soldiers to fight without ammunition. So I want you to understand that it is very important for you to eat well, rest, take your supplements, take vitamins, and take your supplements so that you would be able, those of you that are suffering with diabetes, hypertension, you make sure your sugar level is down, your blood pressure level is down, and, and then, then be safe, okay? This coronavirus, it is very, very dangerous. It has no respect to anyone. Listen, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter what money you have in the bank. Coronavirus doesn't care about that. It will kill you in a minute, if you leave yourself exposed, okay? So you have to be sensible, people. People be sensible and listen. Stay at home. If you don't need to go out, stay at home. Those of you who like to smoke and drink and feel you you can't cope without it, let me tell you something. You will go for the drink and you will come in contact with somebody and they can have it and you get corona and you die. Listen, smokers, drinkers, anyone who does those things, you are putting yourself at risk as well because your lungs is not clear. Your lungs has is already patched up with, with alcohol and, 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 um, this cigarette sot in your stomach. So you need to try and stay healthy, people. I want to tell you something again. I wish I could be there to help you guys. You know, I wish I could be there to encourage you all and to, uh, to, to help you all. But I want you to understand the key things that you need to have in your house. Soap and water. Your bags. You, if you're going out with your face mask, take your face mask. Have a little goggles. Um... Some people are even using um swimming goggles. Yeah, I don't I don't want you to go crazy, but you need to protect your eyes as well. Okay, it doesn't make sense that you go outside there and you don't protect your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. And do not put your hands in your face. I know I've been touching my face, but I'm at home. And uh, I am at home and I everywhere I have gloves. You know, I have sanitizers. I have all of these things. This is normal in my house. I didn't have to go and buy these things specially for because coronavirus is here. I always had these things in my house because I believe when you go on the buses and the trains and everything, it's easy and you're susceptible to catch cold, cough and flu. Another thing for the elderly people is that I know people don't like to take injections. But to have the pneumococcal injection once a year is very good for the elderly people. Because my brother, uh, a year ago, he died from pneumonia. And I am sure if he had the pneumococcal injection, he would not have gotten pneumonia. So one of the high risks of this coronavirus is that you get pneumonia, your lungs become filled with fluid, and also, you feel as though you're drowning in the sea and you you can't help yourself. You can't breathe. You breathe laboriously. People breathe laboriously. I wish I had a, 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 um x-ray to show you now of what a person's lungs look like during and after corona. And I wish I could show you some more patients that uh in the UK and how dangerous it is and how they can't breathe. I want to tell you, if you don't want to listen for some reason or the other, you know, I understand that even um, in Barapo on the news, they got a, a chap who had the corona. Um, I want to tell you something, people. Listen. Caribbean people, listen. Worldwide, listen. Listen to your 
your your health advisors stay at home if you don't need to go out if you have enough food to live you don't need all the fancy stuff you just need something to live yeah if you need to go in the grocery then shop wise the way i tell you um it will work and if you don't need to go if you need to go and get your exercise then you can go and have your exercise like me i go in the morning and i have exercise i exercise just only for half an hour and when I exercise, I exercise when there is not a lot of crowd early in the morning um, or later on in the evening. So the best time is early in the morning when people are not getting up and about. Uh, people stay safe. I want to advise you stay safe. As I said, I am a registered nurse. I'm an advanced practitioner. I am a surgical practitioner. I work also in theaters. I assess patients. And um, I want you to know that you need to keep yourself safe. Okay um in order to to fight this thing and pray god bless you all and share click like and share um and let somebody know that um i've done this just because someone has requested for me to do it thank you and um uh, you can see this i'll put this on the my youtube channel i'll also put it on facebook and send it on whatsapp uh people um look out for each other and another thing i want to remind you all uh, patients that have the virus, it, they find it very difficult to speak. You know, it's difficult to even speak. They feel very tired, exhausted, body pain, aches. They might not communicate straight away with you, but you as a, a the person, make it your duty to at least send a message or make a phone call to the person. People are dying in a lonely position. The child who was just nine years old, he died on his own, no parents around him. You know, and the people are not getting to go to funerals and all of these things. So please think about your family, think about your colleagues, think about your friends and think about your country. Yes, think about it. So um, I'll speak to you if you need any advice or you need any um, help in any way and you want to talk to me, my number, um, if you're adding me on on your what's up it's plus four four seven four one two eight five seven one nine seven so and the whole number is zero seven four one two eight five seven one nine seven and if you're dialing from outside of uk it's plus four four um uh, and i can give you advice if you want to i know there is a lot of helpline or anything but you can drop me a text and ask me if you if you have any question i'm free you know, um, I know the government has their helpline, but if you still need um, someone to talk to or if you need advice, you can just drop me a text. I know my WhatsApp number might be a bit busy at times, but you can do it. Or if you can drop me, if you want to drop me a um, message, drop me messages. I'll, I'll reply. Bye and you take care. Okay. And stay safe.